Okay, so on this lesson, we're going to be looking at all of the different parent functions that we talked about this school year. So we're going to be reviewing these. So first thing, function families. Okay, so when we have a function family, it is a set of functions whose equations share a similar form. Common attributes will also be evident graphically. Okay, so a parent function is the simplest form of an equation representing that function family. So quadratic, square root, cube root, whatever that function family may be. It is useful for recognizing common characteristics among your families. A min and a max. So the minimum... of a function y equals f of x is at a point at which the function reaches the smallest y value. So you'll be looking to see if you have a min or a max. So the maximum of a function is the largest y value. Okay, so the domain and range, the domain is the set of all input values, which are your x's, which are independent, and then your range is the set of all output values, which are your y values, and it's the dependent variable. Okay, so you're always writing your domain and range if you're using interval notation from left to right. And then an asymptote, we've talked about it before, an asymptote is a line that a graph approaches but does not reach. So those are some definitions from this unit when we were talking about all the different parent functions. All right, so first thing, we're going to fill in some information. So we're given this equation, which the function family would that would be square root. And we're gonna make a table for this parent function. All right, so um, let's start out with negative 1. If I plug in a negative 1 right here, that would be undefined. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one, 0. Square root of 0 is 0. The next one we would need is 1. Plug in a 1, square root of 1 is 1. I'm just picking values. You could plug in any numbers that you wanted. And then the next point that I can plug in for it to be a whole number is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And then square root of 9 is 3. So those are the points that I'm going to be using to graph this square root parent function. So negative 1 we can't graph. We can graph 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. And then on this graph we can't even graph the 9, 3. So remember, a square root graph is a ray, has an endpoint and an arrow. So max or min, so we're trying to figure out, is it stopping? So do we have a, a highest point or a lowest point? So notice we do have a minimum point, and that minimum point is at 0, 0. Intercepts, we have an x and a y intercept at 0, 0. The domain, you can either use inequality notation or interval notation. So start with the smallest. Domain is x. Look at the x-axis. You're starting at 0 and you're going to positive infinity. It does include 0, so a bracket and then a parenthesis. Or you can put x is greater than or equal to 0. So I don't care which way you write it. The range, if you look at the y-axis is the same thing. So from zero to positive infinity or y is greater than or equal to zero. All right, asymptotes is where the line's approaching but never touching. On a square root, we do not have any asymptotes. And the parent graph key features, so on a square root, we have an endpoint at 0, 0. So that's just a key feature, that a way that we can remember what a square root graph looks like. 
Okay, so there's square root. Now let's move on. Next one, notice we have a cube root. We're going to set up a table. All right, so I'm looking at plugging in some numbers for x, and we're going to take the cube root of that number. So I'm going to start with my smallest I could plug in, which would be negative 8, in order to be able to graph it, which honestly we can't even graph it here, but we'll just plug it in. So cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. And then the next point would be negative 1 we could plug in. Cube root of negative 1 is a negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0. Cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 8 is 2. So on a normal graph from negative 10 to 10, we would be able to plot all of these. But these graphs are a little smaller. So negative 8, negative 2 is off the graph. So negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. And then the 8, 2 is off the graph. So this is a cube root graph. A max or a min, notice we don't have a max or a min because it's continuous going up and continuous going down. We do have an x and a y intercept at 0, 0. Looking at your domain, the x, notice there's arrows to the left and to the right, so our domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Whichever way you want to write it. You don't have to write it both ways, so you can choose. And then our range is also the same, because look at the y-axis. Notice it's continuous going down and up, so negative infinity to infinity. Or all real numbers. Asymptotes, we do not have any asymptotes on a cube root. And the key features here would be that it is increasing from left to right and you could also put maybe it's more flat than tall that way you can distinguish between your cube root and your um, cubic okay let's move on to the next one so now we're going to look at this x cubed, which is called cubic. Make a table. So I'm going to plug in a number to cube. So I'm going to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. Negative 1. Negative 1 cubed would be negative 1. 0 cubed would be 0, 1 cubed would be 1, 2 cubed would be 8. So I'm just picking values to plug in for my x and then working it out to find that y. So let's graph the cubic. Negative 2, negative 8 goes off the graph. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 8 goes off the graph. So notice 2, negative 2, negative 8 would be somewhere here. 2, 8 would be somewhere here. So notice it is not the same as what we had on the last one. It's very similar to the last one. There's not going to be a max or a min because it's there's not a stopping point or a starting point. We have the same x and y intercept of 0, 0. And your domain is negative infinity to infinity are all real numbers because notice the arrows are continuous to the left and to the right and then also up and down. So range is also all real numbers. On a cubic graph, there are no asymptotes. It's continuous all directions. The parent key or parent graph key features, it's also increasing from left to right. And then instead of putting, like it, we did on the last one, we could put this as um, more tall than 
and flat. So that way, again, that you can distinguish between these two graphs here, cubic and cube root. Okay, so those are three of the parent functions that we have talked about this year. Let's flip over and let's continue on. This one, notice there are bars and that is called absolute value. If you don't remember what an absolute value looks like, it's actually a V, like the V in value. So we're gonna make a table I'll just plug in, it doesn't matter what you plug in, I'm just gonna plug in negative four. Absolute value of negative four would be positive four because remember, absolute value is how far the number is away from zero. So it's always positive because you're measuring. I'm gonna skip around, I'm gonna to go to negative two. Absolute value of negative two would be positive two. I'm gonna to go to zero, absolute value of zero is zero. I'm gonna do two. Absolute value of two is not negative two. A lot of students want to just change the sign, but absolute value is how far the number is from zero. So that's still two. And then I'll do four and four. Okay, so plotting these points, negative four, four, negative two, two, zero, zero, two, two, and four, four. So again, like I said at the beginning, absolute value graphs are Vs. Sometimes they open up, but of course, if you have a negative, sometimes they open down. So we're looking for a max or a min. Notice there is a min, it's at the bottom of the V. So we have a zero, zero point, which is the min. We have an X and Y intercept at zero, zero. The domain, look at your x-axis. Notice it's continuous to the left and to the right. So again, I don't care which way you write it. All real numbers use the symbol or negative infinity to infinity. Okay, looking at the y-axis, notice it is not all real numbers because it stops. We have that min there. So you can remember go left to right, so small to large. So zero to positive infinity if you wanna write it that way or you could put y is greater than or equal to zero. So either way on your domain and range. Asymptotes, there's not any on absolute value. Remember, absolute <coughs> asymptotes are where the line is approaching but never actually touching. Parent graph key features, it's a V-shape graph. So these key features are just something the way that you can remember what the graph looks like. All right, let's move on. Next one, it's been a while since we talked about this. It's a fraction. This is called rational. So your table. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in, I'll start with negative two. I'm plugging it in for x here. One divided by negative two is a negative one half. I'm gonna plug in a negative one. Plugging in a negative one for that x would be one over negative one, which is a negative one. Plugging in zero, notice we're plugging into the denominator. Remember, we cannot divide by zero. That is undefined. One. 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. The reason I'm dividing it is because that's what it tells me, 1 over x. All right, so here's some points that we can use to graph. We have a negative 2, negative 1 half, negative 1, negative 1. 0 is undefined, which means it can't happen, so skip over that. 1, 1, and 2, 1 half. If you remember, rational is two separate pieces on our parent function. So we have a vertical asymptote, and then we also have a horizontal asymptote. So it'll be approaching both of those. So two separate pieces here.
Okay, max or min, notice there's no max or min. Not a highest point or a lowest point. Intercepts, notice it is not crossing the x or the y axis because we have asymptotes. On rational, the domain of a rational, remember we, it's been a while, is all real numbers except what makes it undefined. So on the domain, it would be all real numbers except x cannot equal zero. We'll put a curly bracket. Okay, the range, same thing, all real numbers except y cannot be zero. So that's what that means. You need to know that means all real numbers except that number. We do have um, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So the vertical asymptote would be at x equals 0. The horizontal would be at y equals 0. Um, a key feature would be maybe putting multiple branches, so two separate pieces. So it jumps over where it makes it undefined. All right, now let's look at the next one. The next one we're going to look at is b to the x, which in this example we're going to be using 2 to the x. So that is called exponential because x is in the exponent. Making a table, we're, again, we're using 2 to the x. We're going to plug in. So I'm going to plug in a negative 2. So I would have 2 to the negative 2. We've talked about this before. Laws of exponents, we would move it down. It would end up making it 1 over 2 squared, which would be 1 fourth. Plugging in a negative 1, 2 to the negative 1 would be 1 half. Plugging in a zero, anything raised to the zero is not zero, it's one. Plugging in a one, two to the first power is two. Plugging in a two, we get four. So let's go ahead and start graphing. So negative two, one fourth, negative one and a half, zero, one. 1, 2, and 2, 4. So remember, this is what an exponential graph looks like. Remember, exponential approaches the x-axis on the parent function. So notice this one. We do not have a min or a max. because it's not actually stopping. It's just getting closer and closer and closer. Intercepts, we don't have any. Sorry, we don't have any x-intercepts, but notice we do have a y-intercept. So y-intercept would be at 0, 1. Domain, if you look at the x-axis, it's continuous to the left and right, so all real numbers. And then looking at the y-axis, notice it's everything greater than 0, or you could put 0 to infinity, but it doesn't include 0. So make sure if you're using interval, you don't put a bracket, you put a parenthesis. If you're using inequality, do not put an equal to on that. Asymptotes. Notice it is approaching that x-axis there, so we do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 on the parent function. So exponential approaches the x-axis on the parent function, which is a horizontal asymptote. So that's a way that you can distinguish between your exponential and your log. Okay, so key features. The curve stays above the x-axis. All right, last one. 
So notice this one, we have log, and we're gonna use this example. So this is a logarithmic. If we plug in a negative 1 for this here, we, that part can't be negative 1, so that's undefined. 0, it's also undefined. We can't have a 0 there. If we plug in a 1, we're trying to find 2 to what power gives us 1, which would be 0. If you don't know this, you can use a calculator. Plug in a 2, log base 2 of 2 would be 1, because 2 to the first is 1, or 2 to the first is 2. And then you could also plug in a 4, because 2 squared is 4, so 4, 2. Again, if that doesn't make sense to you, you could always use a calculator and pick some values to plug in to get whole numbers. So these are the points that we're going to be using. 1, 0, 2, 1, and 4, 2. So if you remember, on the log, it approaches a vertical. Notice here, as a vertical. So that's a way that you can remember that. There is no max or min. There is no y-intercept on this one, but there is an x-intercept at 1, 0. Domain, look at the x. You can go from 0 to infinity, but it doesn't include 0. Or you could put x is greater than 0, but don't include the 0. The range, looking at the y-axis, notice it's continuous going down and up. So that would be all real numbers. And then there is an asymptote at the y-axis. So there's a vertical at x equals 0. I didn't draw that on the last one real quick. That was a horizontal. Okay, and then the graph key features on this one, you can put the curve stays to the right of the y-axis. Okay, so this is a review of all of the different parent functions that we've discussed um, this school year. So now what you're going to do is work on the assignment. You need to finish it up and turn it in. If you have any questions, um, you can ask um, next week.